Morning, church. Come on and stand with us today. How many are grateful for all of the goodness of God and everything he's already done in our lives? Amen? Well, we want to speak, you know, as we get ready to wrap up a year right here, we want to just declare that everything that God has for us, we're believing for that this year. We're not looking and saying, oh, you know, God, we got to do another year. But we're saying, thank the Lord for his goodness, that the latter day will be greater than the former day. Thank the Lord that he has great things in store for us. Thank the Lord that we can be full of faith, looking forward to what he has for us in the future. Amen? So if you believe that today, come on, lift up a big shout to him of honor and glory and praise. Come on.
Lord, we thank you for your name today that we can say we believe because of the power of your name. Our confidence not in ourselves, not in what we even say or do, but in you and you alone. The matchless, the powerful, the mighty name of Jesus. There's only one strong enough to say. There's only one who overcame the grave. There's only one who's worthy of all praise. And in his hands, the keys of death and hell. In his name, the power that can heal. And by his blood, our sins are washed away. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is one.
How I love the name of Jesus. How I love the name of Jesus. It's the only name that frees us. How I love his name. Come on, sing that with me. How I love the name of Jesus. How I love the name of Jesus. It's the only name. It's the only name of Jesus. How I love His sing that chorus again but before I do I want you to know that several years ago when I was pastoring in Nashville and just going through just a, a, a really struggle time our church just went through a church split my first wife is dying of cancer and I just I just needed somebody to remind me that Jesus was the name of every name that Jesus was the name above the name of cancer Amen, Pastor George. <laughs> that Jesus is the name above all my fears, all my struggles, all my trials. Somebody this morning needs to have that reminder that Jesus is the name above every name. Because it doesn't matter what you're going through, whether you've had the best year of your life in 23 or the worst year, and you're not even sure if you're looking for a... <laughs> forward to the new year coming in. It doesn't matter because Jesus is the name above what? Sing that with me. And I will lift your name above.
Father, we're thankful this morning for the name of Jesus. Thankful for my salvation today, our redemption, cleansing, healing, restoration, all of it is because of that name, Jesus. We wrapped up Christmas this year, and wrapping up 2023 and moving towards this new year. Father, I pray for us as a people today that we will receive the fullness of the freshness of your spirit. As we look at coming into 2024 and knowing and having no confidence outside of you, Father, but the beauty that our full confidence is indeed because of Christ Jesus. I pray that this morning, this word that's been stirring in me for over a month, this song, Lord, that we're about to listen to, the power of the words, even as we read through scripture and we see the apostles crying out, as Christ said, ascended to your right hand, Father, and he had made his place once again as an intercessor over his children. Lord, that we would indeed hear by the Spirit today as we prepare for this new year, that we'll not waste another day, another year, another opportunity to be about your business. So whether we're crying out, come, Jesus, come, or we're faithfully going about the business of the Father, which is to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person we come in contact with, through our lives, through our actions, through our attitude, through our marriages, through our behavior, that this year will be the most fruitful year we've ever experienced, that we will see thousands come to Christ. Because, Father, we know that that is your heart, to seek and to save those who are lost. So this morning, we open up our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit to hear. Speak to us today, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. You can be seated. I want you to listen to this song I've asked Steve and the worship team to prepare. I heard this six or seven weeks ago. I was in a time of worship down in St. Pete, Clearwater, and um, I'd had my morning devotions, and I was looking for something to worship with, and so I started uh, sifting through some songs, and I came across this song, and it just came alive in my spirit. I wish I could sing it for you, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them do it. I'm going to go stand on the sidelines. and sing it, but I, I have been singing this song over and over, listening to it, simply titled, Come, Jesus, Come. Listen to this word, and as you do, let it, just prepare yourself for what Holy Spirit wants to say to you today. How many of you came expecting to hear something for yourself today? Not, not for your spouse or anybody else, but for you. Came with your, your, your uh, withdrawal slip and you're ready to receive something specific today for you. If you'll listen, I believe today you're going to be encouraged, maybe a little bit convicted, challenged for 2024. Guys, take it. Sometimes I fall 
my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. Sometimes I it might be today time is right Thank you guys. So Father, I just pray over your word now. Thank you for your fresh anointing that every time we open up the word of God, it is life to our spirit. Today, Lord, as I speak this word that you've been stirring in me, I pray for an anointing to hear, an anointing to receive, an anointing to change in all of our lives as we prepare for 2024. Declare this in Jesus' name, amen. Revelations chapter 22, if you want to turn there. If not, you can look at the scripture above my head on the screen. Revelation chapter 22, and I want to read. You can read the whole chapter later, maybe this afternoon, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to just read these five, six verses, beginning with verse 16. Says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. These things are all the things that have been spoken in Revelation chapter 1 all the way up to Revelation chapter 22. So he's declaring that everything you've heard, uh, these testify to you about the things for the churches. He said, I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. 
The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. Can I just tell you, you don't want that to happen in your life. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now turn over to Acts chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, Acts chapter 1. So Revelation, the writer John is recording all the words that he has seen and heard. Uh, He's speaking the the very words of life and comes to the end of this and he cries out, come Lord Jesus. And this morning I'm going to talk about the balance of having that in your heart, on your lips. The prayer, come Jesus, come. See, growing up in my denomination, we were very rapture oriented. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so most folks either were uh, pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. My denomination, we were pre. We're out of here. We're waiting at any moment for the rapture to take place. The rapture meaning the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And hear me, you need to believe and know in your heart Jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon. He's coming back. Soon Soon is a relevant word. I love how in the movie, the, in the series, The Chosen, they use that term a lot. And Jesus kind of laughs every time that word soon is spoken. Because when, when you begin to talk in your connect group or your small group, your Bible study group, your prayer group, and you start talking about the second coming of Christ, the the return of Jesus Christ to the earth, so many folks get hung up on that word soon. Well, it's already been 2,000 years, as though 2,000 years were a lot of years. Come on, somebody. See, when, when, when he does come, or when you enter into the kingdom of heaven through the door of death, you're going one way or the other. A thousand years will be nothing. You can't comprehend it. Don't try to convince anybody that you can comprehend. How long, how amazing, how wonderful being in the presence of Father God forever. You can't imagine that as you battle through life and you battle through stomach issues and headaches and and marital issues and financial problems and everything sometimes seems, even as Steve talked about, overwhelming in your life. The idea that you can be free of all of that. Come on, somebody. The other night, last week, we were... um, after celebrating Christmas with our tribe and finally getting them to go home. (laughs) Man, I don't know about your Christmas day. Thank God the weathermen missed it, right? They were predicting 100% thunderstorms all afternoon. And as the house got louder and louder, I was saying, Lord Jesus, part the skies. Let the the sun come out. Get my kids outside. And and, uh, sure enough, somebody yelled, the sun's coming out. It didn't come out long, but it came out long enough to to, uh, get the kids outside. 
But later on in the evening, as they all had left and Suzanne and I were getting ready for bed and I was closing the blinds in our bathroom and I looked out through the trees and, and I thought, did, did, did a clay electric put a, a new uh, uh, light out in my backyard? It, it was just like a spotlight coming through the trees. Of course, you know me, I love the moon. So I yell, honey, <laughs> come here. <laughs> she loves the moon. She just would prefer it to be behind the clouds so she can sleep because she just, she, she just is absolutely convinced if there's a full moon, she can't stay asleep. I said, baby, I hate to tell you, but the Lord is just blessing me tonight with a full moon. She said, oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but man, was it just shining through bright and just speaking of the goodness of God. And then did any of you guys see that rainbow a day or two? Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody. I wish I'd have had them throw the picture up, the rainbow over Gainesville. Wow, it was stunning. It was like, it was like an artist had just painted that right above the skies. There are so many things in this world that speak about the beauty of the presence of God, and it gives us just a little glimmer of what it might be like in the presence of Jesus forever. Just a little bit, because we can't, we can't even comprehend the magnitude. We were, I was with someone yesterday and who had lost, um, they had lost, the man and woman was having dinner with Suzanne and I and Suzette and Kirk, and they were telling us of, when they went through the loss of all four of their parents in 10 months' time. And, and their parents were all young in their 50s, late 50s and early 60s. Four, two dads and two moms in 10 months had not been sick, and they were gone. And they were sharing with us the pain of that loss and and, and how Holy Spirit ha had to step in and, and bring healing in their heart and their spirit, their minds. They, they had to be refreshed of the goodness of God. And it, it was through all of that that they came to a full salvation experience and put their hope and their trust in Jesus. And, and everybody in this room has gone through some kind of suffering at some point, and, and you have to lean back on the goodness of God. And in those times, you, you can see yourself crying out, come, Jesus, come. Over this last couple of years, Suzanne and I have, times, have had times when we would be sitting in a hospital room or in a clinic or waiting for a treatment, and we would begin to talk, and we would talk about how when we were younger, we, we never prayed those kind of prayers. We never, we never said, Lord, you can come right now. There's nothing else left we need to accomplish. You can come now. And it's okay to pray those kind of prayers as long as after you prayed them, we get up and get about the Father's business. Come on, more than 10 of you say amen to that because I'm going to share it with you right here. Acts chapter 1, listen to this, verse 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus, this is Luke uh, writing this, all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given command through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Can I just pause there for a moment and plug in? If you have not yet received the Holy Spirit since you were saved, you need to invite the Holy Spirit of God to come in and to have full reign in your life, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your body because you were not created to make it alone without the Holy Spirit. If the disciples who walked with Jesus for three years and experienced all the amazing miracles of God needed the Holy Spirit, how much more do you and I need the Holy Spirit today? 
And the Holy Spirit didn't come just to visit you, knock on the door on Sunday morning. He came to reside within you, to live within you, so that you would be empowered to be about what I'm about to read to you, to be about the Father's business. Verse, where did I stop? Five. Uh, and whilst, uh, uh, verse 5, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, same thing we're asking today and same thing the prophets, so many of them today, they are saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. In other words, what Jesus is saying to his disciples here, don't get hung up on things you ought not to get hung up on. Number one, I'm coming back. Number two, until I come back, get busy about the Father's business. Hear me, that's not for the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, the apostles or the prophets alone, that's for every person that has received Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. Can you say amen to that? That's for all of us. We can't point fingers and say, well, preacher, I'll be back here next Sunday, and you make sure you have a good word. And matter of fact, won't you get a few people saved before you come back next week? The guy on stage or the woman on stage is not our hirelings. They're simply here to... Bring the word so that we can be built up, edified, strengthened for the work of the ministry. What is that work? Here it is. But you will receive power, verse 8, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. And a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So, in 2023 slash 2024, we have to know and understand the balance of what Jesus is calling us as his church to be, to walk out, to live out, and to fulfill. Number one, there's two main points I want to share with you this morning. I'm not going to be long. Number one is the desire and belief that Jesus is coming back for his church, his bride. And we need to believe that he is going to do what he said he was going to do. That's why we can sing a song like we sang, Come, Jesus, come, and believe in our heart, hope in our heart, want to see. I, I, I am believing that I'm going to get to live and see the second coming of Jesus Christ. And if you're not believing that for yourself, why not? Don't let 2,000 years. See, when Paul wrote most of the epistles, he believed that Jesus was going to return in his lifetime. Peter believed that Jesus would be coming back before he was going to be hung on a tree upside down. The disciples believed. And many that have gone before us have believed. You say, well, then, Pastor, why should I believe? Shouldn't we just, you know, be about our business and just whatever it is it's going to be? No. I believe we are to have that heart to cry out, come, Jesus, come. In my lifetime, Lord, you, there's nothing left that I need to accomplish or do unless you give me the grace to wake up tomorrow, and then I'm going to be busy about your business. See, the angel of the Lord said to the disciples, why are you looking up when you need to be looking forward to what he has for you? Say, so that almost sounds contradictory, Pastor. You're telling us to believe for his coming, ask him to come, can't wait till he comes. But at the same time, we don't need to be gazing up. We need to be gazing out. What is it? 
that you're called to do? What is it that you, as a believer, are called to be about? Say, well, I'm a businessman. Then be about the business of business. I'm a doctor. Then go doctor some folks. I'm a lawyer. Then go give some good advice. I'm a banker. Give me some money. <laughs> yeah, whatever you is, you is. Be faithful to it. But don't let, don't allow that to be who you are. Say, well, I'm a banker. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm a nurse. I, I'm, a, I'm a builder. I'm a salesperson. I'm a retail person. No, those are the things you do to make a living. That's not who you are. Somebody say amen to that. It's not who you are. You are the redeemed of the Lord. God has you here for a purpose and a reason. He's got something he wants you to do that no other believer is called to do. Some of you don't believe that. But there's something in someone you're called to reach and touch that I'll never be able to reach or touch. The other day, my brother-in-law and I and my son Luke uh, foolishly went out to play golf in 25-mile-an-hour winds <laughs> that were 40 degrees. And I got my first ever fever blister right there. I've never had one in my entire life until I tried to play golf for 18 holes shivering. And I had five layers of clothes. Like, I, man, it was cold. But right before we were going to tee off, this young man asked, hey, y'all have a fourth. And our fourth was smarter than we three, and he bailed out. He was from St. Augustine. He was going to come over, and, and uh, he bailed. So we said, yeah, we, we, uh, you can play with us. Well, he's wearing a FSU hat. <laughs> I'm wearing a Gator hat. And we laugh, shake hands, and... And uh, over the course of the 18 holes, uh, we had conversations. And right before we left, I said, dude, I am so sorry y'all got left out by the committee. But, but, I think I'm going to be feeling sorry for y'all by the end of the first quarter. He said, well, I think it's going to be bad, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. It was that bad. Because the difference was FSU, half of their best players bailed when they didn't get to play for a championship. They wussed out. Georgia, and I don't like Georgia either. <laughs> they don't like us either. <laughs> but they came to play. And, and, and almost their entire team came back for this game the difference between what it meant to one team and what it meant to the other. And I, I, to be honest, I really like the coach for FSU. He's a good guy. He's a good coach. And I felt sorry for him. I mean, because you're doing your best, but when your talent level, you know, when you got high school playing against college, the, the talent level is just you're going to get whipped by 60 points and the game's going to be over by halftime. But, but Georgia showed up. We as believers are called to show up. We're called to show up. Doesn't matter what's going on around us. Doesn't matter what's happening. Are we going to show up? I asked the young man with the FSU hat on, and he was a really nice young man. Single guy, 36, I think, years old. And I asked him, what do you do for a living? And he said, well, I'm a professional caddy. And I thought, oh, goodness gracious. He, <laughs> and, 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 and sure enough, I mean, he, he, he played like he had had a few lessons. And uh, there was his score, and then there was our score. <laughs> but he was gracious with us. And... Uh, but he never asked me what we did. 
I was good with that. But I had some, I had some worship music blaring on my little stereo. And he went from S and this and D and that and, you know, just the words that come out of unbelievers' mouths. Doesn't offend me. But I noticed after a couple of holes, his language changed. <laughs> How come that happened? We didn't say anything. I didn't say, dude, that really offends me. Because it didn't. It's how you and I talked. Well, it's how y'all talked. I, I never cuss. <laughs> Even when I wasn't saved, I promise you, the only cuss words I've ever heard, y'all have heard them because I say them from the pulpit. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever cussed was from the pulpit. <laughs> but, but it doesn't offend because it, it's the nature of someone who is empty. And he was in a conversation with Luke about maybe thinking about going out to Las Vegas and, you know, maybe caddying out there and playing a lot of golf out there and doing whatever he does to make a living while he's doing whatever he does. And, and, uh, but but the, the, the reality of what we're called to do is just to be a light. And, and if there's an opportunity to open your mouth and speak a word, then you open your mouth and speak a word. If it's only an opportunity for you to let your actions speak for you, then you let your actions speak for you. Because between myself, Luke, and my brother-in-law, Kirk, we had enough bad shots to say a few S words. <laughs> but the idea that I'm going to speak like that just because I hit a bad shot, then I should quit golf. Right? I mean, if I, if I got a cusp to let out frustration, then why am I playing golf? I mean, I got enough frustration in my life. <laughs> but I love the game. And, and, and you're going to make some bad shots. I mean, I, I watch enough of, of professional golf to go, when I hit a bad shot, no big deal. Because those guys hit a thousand balls a day and make Matter of fact, my brother-in-law said the other day, he said, hey, did you hear John Rahm went to live golf? I said, no, you got to be kidding. He said, well, they gave him $400 million. Not to win the tournament, just to come and to lead the PGA. You think our world's not out of whack? $400 million just to play with the live tournament instead of the PGA tournament. How many of y'all think that's a lot of money? That, that's a... That's a lot of money. I might even go play for live for, for 400 million. I mean, not 100 million. I'm not going to, you know, but 400 million. It's like, you don't even have to win anything. Just, just show up. Play three days instead of four. You get an extra day at home. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of perks. Just don't ask me my personal opinion about it. So, but, but we have to come to that place where when the Lord opens the door for us, we're ready to bring this word that we've been called to bring. And we're faithful. For how long? Until Jesus returns or I enter into heaven through the door of death. And as a believer, you don't have to fear that. That's not something you have to sit around going, oh, you know, I, 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 I. no, we're all getting older, older. My daughter-in-law, Steph, and my son, Nathan, today's their anniversary, so I, w I congratulated them on 19 years of marriage. Well, they've been married 18 today, it's, but, but, but Luke writes and says, I don't think that's right. I think it's 18. I, well, I can't remember. Andrew and Jess got married first. I, I thought they had already celebrated their 19th. Jess jumps in on the family thing. No, no, we celebrate 18, so that means Nathan and Steph are 18, so, but the reality is, we're all getting older because yesterday I married all these kids. I mean, we did 41 weddings in a year and a half. And 30 of those couples or more are still in this church today with 100 plus children. Come on, somebody. You got to grow your church one way or the other. I even see Jonathan and Shanna here. Oh, and Bob and Corey there too. Hi, guys. It's about time y'all came home to visit me. I mean, your mom and dad. <laughs> It's good to see these guys, Pastor Ed and Karen's kids, and uh, having a late Christmas. And, uh, but, but a lot of couples with a lot of kids. 
with a lot of purpose and reason to be about the Father's business. You weren't, you weren't just married to each other over, over our Christmas morning as we sat in front of the uh, fireplace getting ready to let the kids open their presents. Suzanne and I shared a little bit, and she shared about her mom experience with coming to Christ, being raised in a home where neither one of her parents were even Christians up in northern Louisiana, and how her uh, mom, as a little girl, eight, nine years old, would literally get up on Sunday morning, get dressed, and walk to church by herself because she had this hunger, something inside of her she wanted to know about God. And because of that experience and coming to salvation, her mom and dad, Suzanne's grandparents, ultimately were wonderfully saved as well. And and she's talking about the impact that that had on her life. And her two sisters and her brother who all walk with Jesus and almost all of their kids uh, are walking with the Lord today. The grandchildren, the great-grandchildren are walking with the Lord today. And so then I shared just briefly about some of my, my story through my dad and mom and, and, and my grandkids' eyes got this big. And some of them, you know, they're like, Baba, I got a question. I was like, ask your mom about that. <laughs> So, so I'm just telling a little bit about my mom and dad, and, and you know, many of, most of y'all have heard much of, of my f- dysfunctional family story, and, and my parents married and divorced each other three times, and my dad married twice again after that, and found out later in life that mom had been married before she ever married my dad. She married my dad at 19, so she, was, she had already been married and divorced at 19, and, and yet all of this craziness of their stories ultimately came to a place where salvation in my life. And had I not gotten saved, the whole point we were trying to share with our grandkids was the significance of each of our stories because had Suzanne's parents not, mom not got saved and had my parents not got me into church and I had an experience with Christ at eight years of age, I would have not been saved. And had I not been saved, I wouldn't have left high school a year early. And had I not left a year early and gone to this particular college, I wouldn't have met Suzanne. And had I not met Suzanne, we wouldn't be married. The kids wouldn't be here. They wouldn't exist. This church wouldn't exist. Your marriage is 41 couples that I performed weddings that met in this church in, in college ministry would have never got married. Imagine. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful, <laughs> hear me, it's a wonderful life you live. So I'm up here telling my story, but your story is every bit as important as mine. Because one day your children's children are going to look back and they're going to start telling their story. Because they're going to be, that, that's why I say to couples, you don't just uproot and, and, and move off somewhere because somebody offered you more pay. You better find out where God wants you because your children's children's children will determine the blessings of God in their life or they will miss the blessing of God if you miss God. We need to know where we're supposed to be because of the relationships that come out of that. 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to wrap up with this. So, Steve, come on back up here, please. 2 Peter, I'm reading quite a few verses here, uh, 13 verses. Peter's writing, and he said, now, this is the second letter that I'm writing to you. In both of them, listen to this, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior through your apostles, knowing this first of all. Listen to this, and, and as I read this, think about the day and the hour that we're living in, not 2,000 years ago, today, and see if it doesn't sound very familiar to the day of 2023, knowing there's, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago 
and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is what? As a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come. But the day of the Lord will come. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So my prayer today, come Jesus. But if I'm praying that prayer, I'm praying in faith and trust and belief that all my family is going to be right with God. My children and my children's children, your children and your children's children. If we're really coming to that place where we're saying, Lord, we're, we're hastening the day of your second coming. We're believing, we're hoping, we're waiting. We also then need to understand the significance and the importance, especially, can I speak to all the men in the house for a moment? Get your hands out of your pockets during worship or else look around and watch your sons that are mimicking you as they stand there with no expression and no passion for worship because they're watching daddy. I love you men. Hear me. We cannot just hope that one day they're going to get it. This is the day. I'm believing for all my children's children to be passionate about the things of God, desiring to know him and to find out what is it that he wants me to do with my life. Every young man in this place, every boy, every teenage boy, every teenage girl, God has a purpose and plan for your life if you don't miss it. But if you miss it, hear me, there will be consequences to not being right with Jesus when Jesus comes. There won't be time for a mulligan. There won't be a do-over. We have to live believing that this is the day of the Lord. This is the day of salvation. This is the day when I need to be fully all in for Jesus Christ because we never know when our life on this earth is over. Hear me. I'm not into hellfire and damnation and scaring the hell out of people to try to get them right with God. I grew up in that stuff. It doesn't work. When I came to Jesus at eight years of age, something inside of me hungered to know God. And I ran to an altar and cried out and asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins, not because I was just afraid of hell, but because I wanted to be right with the one who had already made things right with me. Jesus has done everything he can do for you and your children. And now it's up to us. We're anointed as dads to lead our homes, to lead our families, lead them in worship, lead them in prayer, lead them in the house of God so that the house of God is their favorite place in the world, not Disney World. Not Sea World, not Bush Gardens, the house of God. 
Is it possible? Can the house of God compete with Disney and their perversion? Jesus loves our children. I'm believing for 2024 to be a year of an outpouring of his presence among the youth of our house. They don't have to go run off to another church. They need to run to God in their house. They need to fully experience from an early age to know Jesus, to hunger and thirst, to love the house of God, to love worship, to learn how to love the Word of God. So we can pray, come, come Jesus, come, come today in my life personally. Anything inside of me that is not right, Holy Spirit, I invite you, bring that conviction so I can get it right, so I can get cleaned and get my mind purified, get my mind right, so that I can be full So that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what your battle is, no matter what you're dealing with, that you don't let cancer become an excuse. You don't let a bad marriage become an excuse. You don't let your children become an excuse, but you literally, for your own personal life, Lord, come in my life today. Fresh and new, cleanse me, wash me, redeem me, restore me, so that I can turn and lead my children and my children's children in the way of righteousness. Would you bow your heads, please? I'm gonna invite the ministry team to come up here in a moment, but before we do, I want these guys just to sing through this second course of this song again. I invite you to just close yourself in to you Invite Holy Spirit right now. Fresh Holy Spirit in me. Be glorified. Whatever needs cleansing, changing in me. Jesus, I invite you. I invite your presence so that we can be clean in Christ. Prayer team, I wanna invite you just to quietly get up, come down here as Steve sings this one more time. I'm gonna just wait in the presence of the Lord for a moment this morning. Go ahead, brother. One day he'll come And we'll stand face to face Lay it all down Cause it might be today The time is right
Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you need to make something right with him today, you can come down here to this front. One of these folks will pray with you and for you. Maybe you got something going on in your life. You have a need physically, financially, emotionally, whatever it is. Holy Spirit is here to touch you, to heal broken hearts. But I, I really want to challenge that if Holy Spirit is speaking a word of conviction in your life, that you don't push it off. Step out as a step of faith to say, Lord, I, I want to make this thing right. I want to lead righteously. If you need to get something right with the Lord this morning as they sing this song one more time, just invite you to come. Get ready for 2024 in a righteous way.
lift it up. His name is Jesus. His name is Every voice singing out his name is Jesus. Above his name is Jesus. His name is Father, thank you so much for Jesus. We are grateful, thankful for all the promises that are yes and amen because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross for our benefit. Today I pray over this people, this family that you have joined together from the north, south, east, and west. Lord, I just declare as we wrap up this year and prepare for 2024, Lord, that there is going to be faith, hope, confidence, excitement, that no matter what's going on in our nation, in the political arena, Lord, that we are not going to get caught up or bound up in all of the confusion, but that we're going to walk in the peace that passes all understanding, that our lives are going to show forth your presence, your peace, your joy. We declare, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives, the lives of our families. And I pray that this year, that each one of us are gonna have unbelievable opportunities to be the light that shines in a dark place and that through it we'll see many come to Christ Jesus. So I give you thanks and praise for that. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said a big amen. God bless you. You can be seated for a couple of minutes. I have a couple of things I need to share uh, before I turn it over to Pastor Jamie and we get you out of here. First and foremost, though, I'm excited, finally, given the green light to uh, announce uh, an engagement of marriage that happened a few little while back, uh, but uh, it's a joy today for me uh, and for Suzanne to uh, announce the engagement of marriage of our very own Kelsey Candelaria and Mike Carrillo. You guys stand up so they can see. We're excited for these guys and uh, been praying a long time with Oscar and Vicki for uh, Kelsey to uh, uh, get married. So here we are, I answer to prayer. Kelsey, thank you. Mike, thank you. Uh, we bless you guys. And uh, we'll give uh, other announcements as they uh, make plans and arrangements. So uh, we rejoice with them. And with Oscar and Vicki, and I think Mike's mom is here as well this morning. So it's a joy to have them and celebrate with them. All right, I want to share something real important before I get off the stage. Um, most of you, I trust and hope that you had a Bible reading plan for 2023 and that you walked it through the whole year. And today is your last day in whatever Bible reading plan you chose to use. Um, if you didn't, don't look down right now because everybody will know that you didn't. Just look up and smile and nod like you did. But I want to encourage you, the Word of God is the most important thing that you can commit your life to this year in walking in His presence. If you want to know God, you got to know His Word. And so I encourage you. I, uh, I used a, a particular Bible reading plan last year, and I want to encourage you, there's, there's just, uh, there's, an unbelievable amount of plans out there. You can get online, uh, find them. I happen to use one um, on Uversion uh, the last three years, actually. And um, Suzanne likes one kind of plan. I like another kind of plan. There's no perfect plan. There's just read the Word of God. 
all right? I particularly like devotions that, that I don't read other people's devotion. I, I want a devotion that is just the Word of God. So I choose one that's a whole lot of reading. It's about 20 to 30 minutes every morning uh, where I read the Word, and I'm reading in the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, and, uh, and I do a particular study in that. All I want to encourage you to do as you wrap up this year, start tomorrow uh, with a fresh devotional and make a commitment to read it every single morning. There's nothing more important, no job site, no surgery, no banking, no lawyering, no business. There's nothing more important than get up early enough, make your coffee, your cappuccino, your latte, your hot tea, your mango juice, your glass, whatever it is, your preference, uh, get up, make sure you're awake, and then find a place where you can sit and read the Word, not sit and sleep, but sit and read the Word. And uh, I was awake at 4 o'clock this morning, and um, I was like, I do not need to be awake this early. So uh, I just went ahead and opened my devotional. Uh, I'm, I'm already uh, two months into uh, the 2024 because I finished my devotional last year because of all the time I had in clinics. Um, I read through my devotional was through by the end of October. Uh, that's not patting me on the back. That's just me having a lot of sitting time. And so I was reading the word and uh, finished up. So I found one that I really liked that I started this year and it's called 52 Weeks in the Word. And uh, so uh, it's on the U version. And again, if you go to U version, you can just type in Bible reading plan, 2024 Bible reading plan. I want to read the word plan. Just, there's so many ways you can find, but find something, read through it, make sure it's something you want to commit to. And then I encourage you to get in and read it. Now, I want to share something with you that might help you a little bit in your reading of the Word and studying of the Word. I also found a plan that I really liked. Uh, it's really a method for reading the Word, uh, a concept of reading it in a certain way. And this one I found is called the SOAP Bible Study, S-O-A-P. And it's simply an acronym for this. SOAP, S is for Scripture, O is for observation, A is for application, and P is for prayer, okay? So, uh, as I read through it, I just loved the encouragement that it gave. Number one, Scripture, uh, read the Scripture uh, in the middle of your Scriptures. You know, if there's one verse that pops out, take that verse, take time, grab your notepad, and write the verse out. It, one, it'll help you to set the Word of God to memory. Uh, you're not going to memorize a whole chapter every day. Uh, most of you will probably not memorize a verse a day, but set yourself to begin to go, I need the Word of God in me, so I I'm going to take the time to discipline and uh, write it out. Just simply write it and, uh, and read it and ask Holy Spirit what it's saying. The second thing is observation. Uh, take time to, uh, to observe the passage that you're reading. Uh, what does the verse uh, you're reading say to you? Uh, who's the intended audience? What's the culture um, factors at play in this particular scripture? Are there any words or themes that are repeated? Uh, and what literary devices are being used. There's just a lot of different things as you're reading the Word, you're observing, you're meditating, you're pondering as, you know, you read the Scripture where uh, Mary was spoken to by the angel of the Lord, and it says that she pondered that Word. And then when Jesus was born and all these, you know, wise men began to come and, and the shepherds become, it, it says that Mary pondered, she observed, she thought about what was taking place. And eventually one day she stood at the foot of the cross and watched her son being crucified. And all of that pondering came into the full understanding of what God had spoken to her, that Jesus would be the Savior of the world. Number three is application. After carefully observing what is happening in that particular scriptures that you're reading, determine the central message or truth of the, pa of the passage and how can you apply this particular truth into your life. And then four is prayer. Pray God's word back to him. Learn how to pray uh, and take the word of the Lord and say uh, in whatever method or, 
or terms or, you know, whether you're quoting the ESV or the King James Version, you know, if you pray thou and, and uh, all, the, all the King Jimmy words, then go for it, you know, if that's your cup of tea. Uh, but if you just need regular old message version type, then read the message and begin to use that word and begin to pray it back. The Lord's, uh, you know, the Lord's prayer that we call the Lord's prayer that so many pray religiously as a prayer was literally Jesus teaching his disciples. They said, Lord, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. And he said, okay, this is how you do it. You start off by, um, um, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So he's teaching the disciples how to give honor and praise to the Lord as you enter into prayer. So you enter in through the door of praise, you exit through the door of praise. So I just encourage you to take time, find something, make a commitment to read it this year, and don't let anything be that hindrance, which means sometimes you just have to set that clock earlier to get up, to get in the Word of God. All right? Love you guys. Bless you. We'll see you next year, tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, as always, we're going to give you the opportunity to continue in your worship with, uh, with your tithes and offerings this morning before we head out. In the backs of the seats there, there's envelopes you can mark clearly. You can make a check clearly to the rock and put in the memo what it's for. And then also you can give online, and um, those instructions are, are super clear there. So as you prepare that and as we give this morning, I want to pray over you. Father, thank you so much that we get to cry out the name of Jesus in all things, that we get to just cry out that you would be present in every situation in our lives. God, we don't want to do life without you being present everywhere. And one of those areas, God, is in our resources and our finances. So this morning we come speaking this and declaring this, but then acting, having this act of worship of paying our tithes, giving our offering, Father, to honor and to glorify you. We thank you for it, and I just declare blessing over everyone participating this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Well, we're going to continue our first Wednesdays this year, and we're going to begin this week. Wednesday night, 6.30, worship, prayer, and communion, and we're going to begin 2024 with a bang and definitely speak and prophesy over some things and declare some things and believe. I, I, I grabbed hold of something Pastor said when he was preaching a minute ago that we ought to be looking forward. And, and just like our language, we say often, I'm looking forward to this, meaning with excitement, expectation, and I want to see something great happen. So we're going to literally have a night just to worship and to look forward and declare prophetically we're looking forward to great things that God is going to do this year. Um, we do have preschool care provided if you were um, wondering about that. So we'll be here Wednesday night, 630. Grow Track, our next session begins on next Sunday, January 7th. And, of course, this is our four-week course where we emphasize knowing God, finding freedom, discovering purpose, and making a difference. Um, Brian Berryman is there every week with that course, as well as one or two of our other pastors will come in and they'll um, and, and, and give some guidance and direction. It's basically our new members class. And I also encourage people, if you have not been through it and you've been here, I would encourage you to go through it at least once and just get a feel for what somebody has seen as they come in and get plugged in in our house. And again, we'd love for you to sign up for that. You can sign up online, therockonline.org slash register, and we'll get you set up there. And then lastly, um, our connect groups, as always, we're wanting people to get connected. This is great, right? But I remember years ago, pastor would say, you can't fellowship with the back of somebody's head. <laughs> you need to get into a place of a small group where you can gather together, lock arms together, pray together, be accountable with one another, uh, and, and just do life. And so we want you to get involved in connect groups. And part of that is we have a new leaders meeting coming up next Sunday at 9 a.m. And if you're interested in becoming a leader or learning more about that process, we'd encourage you to come out to that meeting 9 a.m. I believe it will be right here in the multipurpose room directly behind you to your um, to your left. So we'd love to have you get involved there as well. And um, and you can register for that meeting, same place, therockonline.org slash register. We have all our registrations there on those pages. Go ahead and stand with me this morning. It's been great to have you guys here at the house. And especially those this morning of you who are visiting, we'd love for you to head right out this door here to our big kiosk. You can't miss it, that big desk that says TR. Our hospitality team's there. We'd love to just kind of meet you and greet and uh, we have a gift for you if it's your first time, and we'd love to get your name and see how we could best serve you and if this is the place that God has for you. Otherwise, love on somebody, and everybody have a happy new year.